We're in Bali. Look at this. It's like little pods. And then there's like these little rivers. It's like a moat throughout the whole, around the whole hotel area. So we got here yesterday. Originally the plan was to go spear fishing today. Me and Sarah are here with two of our friends and me and one of my friends, TJ, have been planning to do spear fishing at least for two days while we were here. Unfortunately, the people that we were supposed to go spear fishing with today ended up canceling. So we're gonna try to find something else to do and we will definitely be spear fishing tomorrow. Um, we are currently in Sanur, which is kind of the southeast part of Bali uh, for a couple days and then we're gonna be heading up north to Ubud, um, which is one of the main hotspots of Bali for the rest of our trip, which will be like a few more days. Bali is all about that pool that's at the surface level. And so with our first day of spearfishing canceled, we decided to go snorkeling. And this would end up giving me and my buddy TJ an opportunity to practice our free diving skills, which we ended up taking some classes on a little bit before we came to Bali, so that we'd actually know how to go deep underwater for our spear fishing endeavors. It gets cold pretty fast once you get down to the bottom. So it's Tuesday morning and I am on the rooftop garden, which is super pretty, which I thought would be kind of cool to come up before the sun started to get up. Today would be our spear fishing adventure. Yeah, well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, we have two birthdays today. Hidden, look. This is your glass. Look, one, two, three. Hmm. Happy birthday. Summer in the rise. Let's see. Happy slowly passes by. And so the plan was to go out to an area called Nusa Panita, and we'd be going out to a few different spots on the water, diving down, looking for fish for a little while, and then moving on to new spots. TJ nor I had ever done this before. And so this was actually the first time I'd ever been in a wetsuit, which I didn't realize would make me feel so claustrophobic. And so as I fell into the water, it ended up being colder than I anticipated. My wetsuit was coming up to the top of my neck and I was starting to feel like I did not want to be here. It was really uncomfortable, and I look over to my guide, and he hands me the spear, which I realize I don't even know how to hold it while I'm swimming through the water. Do I hold the handle? Do I hold the middle? I can't see anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I down here? This is not as much fun as I thought it'd be. I was ready to get back on the boat pretty quickly. We were headed to a different area since no one was really seeing any fish in the last spot. Okay, boss. Can go to the front also. And your, your lovely time. You bring something back to the boat. Yeah. No one's really seen much so far. Yeah, this so, is a good try. So we're going to different That's spots, Irishman. seeing what we can find. Visibility is about yeah. average, apparently. So. I was starting to feel a little bit more comfortable in the water and in my wetsuit and just moving with my fins and began to actually start seeing some fish. Our guides were giving us a few pointers and tips and what was most impressive with them was that it was like they lived in the water. They moved fluidly, they could go down much deeper and stay down so much longer than me or TJ. And it was really impressive just to see them in their element, particularly since they were like 15 years old. Whenever we shot, our guides would reload the guns for us because we didn't know what we were doing, and then they'd just hand it back to us. A couple of the more experienced guys were actually starting to catch some fish.
So we saw some dolphins. Got to swim so with them cool. a little bit. Swimming with the dolphins. They didn't. We swam with them. They were not very interested. Yeah, they were like pretty far below. I noticed like with clear visibility, I feel a lot better about going deeper because you kind of don't even feel like you're going a lot deeper. Um, so I'm actually excited to go back out. Those first few runs is like really, really limited visibility. So it was a little bit more. I don't know, it's not as comfortable going down when you can't see where you're going. In our free diving lessons, we learned that as you're diving down, you wanna go head down, looking forward, not looking in the direction that you're swimming, and begin equalizing by plugging your nose and forcing pressure through repeatedly as you're going down so you don't bust your eardrums. And as you got to 30 or 40 feet, you can begin to re-level yourself out, look around for a little while, relax, and after some time, head back up. The deceptive part is as you go down deeper, you feel a pressure on your lungs. That's the same feeling of, oh man, I really need to take a breath. But it's deceptive because you actually have enough air to last a little while down there. So it's a balance of, is this just pressure on my lungs or should I probably go up before I drop? I looked up and there was just this like huge man array right in front of me. I've never seen that before in my whole life. It was freaking sweet. Well, we've been hunting all day, haven't seen anything, and our guide uh, jumped in the water, checked one place, <coughs> turned around, and this swam, swam at him. <laughs> He's literally in the water for like five minutes and we've been in like all day. Cool. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I think we have one more spot for TJ and I to prove ourselves worthy. Everyone else has caught something except us. Here's everybody else. So it was now or never for us, and we're gonna see if we flew all the way around the world only to come out empty-handed. And by this point, I was getting a little more liberal with my shooting, pretty much trying to shoot at anything that was coming near me after getting as close as I could to it. Our guides were also rooting for us, and so once we shot, they already had a spear that was already loaded that they would hand to us, uh, so we could go just right back at it again. So I probably went deeper than I had gone the entire time. Now, six hours into this, I was feeling a lot more comfortable in the water, and I saw a little school of fish, tried to swim as close as I could to them, and shot. And I got one. I let go of the gun because there's a buoy attached to it, and I swam to the surface to catch my breath, and then grabbed the gun and started to pull the little fish in, and the guide came up and helped me out because I didn't know what I was doing, and we pulled in the grand fish that I had hunted down. There's the smile. <laughs> Our guide was pretty stoked that one of the newbies had finally gotten a fish. Start small. <laughs> that little one right there. <laughs> well, I can't say it was a day poorly spent, but you know, we were as good as I should have expected we would be. Found that equalizing was only a problem until I got to like 30 feet. I could stay down longer than I thought. I think the biggest thing about practicing all the free diving stuff before we got here was that I was just thinking about free diving. I was just thinking about how far I was going and how long I'd been under and how much I really wanted to breathe, but being kind of like under the water and looking for fish and kind of seeing them and wanting to get a little bit closer to see if I could actually shoot them. I think I went a lot deeper than what I had done uh, practicing in Austin uh, because there was more of a purpose than just getting deeper in the water for the sake of getting deeper in the water. As a first spear fishing trip, it was everything I really could have hoped for. I really wish we could have gotten two days of it, but the crew that we were with was really supportive and encouraging. It was just a ton of fun. Join us in our next episode where we'll be trying some of the world famous Luwak coffee, which is coffee eaten by a little cat-like creature that digests the coffee bean, poos out the coffee bean, and then you brew said coffee bean.